I'm always asked, Robbie, what product are you picking up this year? What do you think is going to have the most interesting value? Well, here, today we're going to answer that. Make sure you guys smash the open crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more Oz content. Now, we're going to start off here with Age of Overlord, and one of the reasons why I actually am going kind of hard on this set is YCS Indie. Um, this actually should be the first set that this set is going to be legal for, and you know what that brings to the table, right? You have the new Doomsday Star, you have the Horus cards in this set, you have, you know, the new IP, the SP Little Knight. This set has so many insanely cool cards cards in it for meta warping, but I have a YCS that weekend, so I had to actually pick up a case of this to make sure that, you know, we can open up the product to make sure that we can pull the cards that we need in order to play this event. And if you've watched this channel, you've seen I've done a lot of playtesting with Horus. Um, I think the deck is a lot of fun, at least the pure variant of things. There's always going to be a lot of cool ways to, you know, kind of shape things up. And also, I mean, personally, um, Doomsday Star alone is such a cool card in terms of the way that the set is set up. Um, at least, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a brainless runic player at this point in time, you know, no matter how things go. If I can convert something out of the extra monster zone with a uh, free monster, well, you can bet that we are going to try to play that and make something out of this. Um, this set, I think, is going to be the best core set of the year. It's really saying something considering the track record of things like how Duel's Nexus was. But I'm going to be curious to see how the rarities are going to be spread across this set and how you know they're gonna try to combat things. This set also has a lot of good stuff in it, like the uh, the Supreme King stuff, the next line of mana DM support. It's just a home run all the way around, and then whatever imports and goodies that we get in the set are also just gonna be free add-ins. I feel like at that point in time, so. I'm going pretty hard on this set for competitive reasons and to ensure that I can have, you know, cards straight away. So I like this set. It's pretty good. Now, of course, this is a no brainer here for anybody looking at the game currently. And it's the 25th rarity collection. Um, if you were expecting this to not make this set, whoo we, I, but what, what do you want me to tell you at this point on when you have a set full of how many different higher rarities and as somebody that wants the chance to pick up these different sorts of cards just to be able to you know play in whatever rarities um honestly also to the budget players there's there's no ifs ands or buts about it like age of overlord might be the best core set of the year 25th anniversary collection is the best set of the year period like there's there's no changing this. The things that this set brings to the game, in terms of budget options, in terms of availability for players, and a wide a range of rarities as well, Hmm, you know, I I don't know what you want me to, to say about this. If you're not looking at the rarity collection right now, and you're like, wow, you know, like this is dog. I don't want to. I don't pick this set up. Uh, you know, obviously you can play the game for singles. That's that's fine. Um, that's up to your discretion. But honestly, the potential to pick up any sort of staple, any any opportunity. If you've got a friend that's been wanting to get into the game, you know. Tell them to look at this set, you know. You're going to have a lot of low rarity cards in this set that might end up being dollars, depending on how much is available out there. And let's be honest, Imperms and Ash Blossoms at dollars is literally any player's dream of wanting the chance to get into the game. So I personally am excited for this, um, but I mean, everybody should be, right? Like, this is the set of the year. Now, the next one's a little bit more controversial, and it's actually Voliant Smashers. Now, the reason why I'm going after Voliant Smashers is, when it comes to these deck build sets, um, I usually try to open up a case of them, just to be able to have everything uh, playset it out. Um, also, you know, kind of see what kind of cool stuff that we can actually pull at the end of the day. Uh, Voliant Smashers also, I mean, you have the potential to pull Collector's Rares and Quarter Centuries in the same set, which is an interesting marketing ploy on the TCG side of things. Um, they're saying, hey, you know, we're not going to kill off Collector's Rares, but we're going to drop in some Quarter Centuries as well. If this should be a marketing ploy for, like, all future sets. You should include both rarities into these sets, but 
I do have hope for everything in this set, honestly. I think looking at how Konami's had a trend here of powering up all these decks, I, I still think that the, uh, the little jewel archetype in here just needs a link one, and the deck could go crazy. You could have access to the 5,000 level 11, and you could do so much cool stuff with it. Uh, the, uh, the poison archetype, not so much, but, uh, also, um, we all know why we actually want this archetype. The, the Centurion archetype, the ability to do, you know, calamity stuff to the opponent, making it so they can't play the game, is uh, the real reason why we're all looking at this. Overall, um, I do think this is going to be doomed on the same front as all previous Duelist packs, where everything just kind of drops down, but, I mean, look what they did with Purely. <laughs> they, they were able to give Purely, what, two cards, and... All of a sudden, the deck explodes in popularity. So there's not to say that we couldn't follow the same trend there in the future. Uh, it just takes one card, and Konami knows what they're doing with these one-card upgrades to make you want to go, oh, I should probably go pick that up now. Now, we have a couple things that I have already invested in. Uh, one of them is going to be the pot collection here. Now, the reason why I picked up the pot collection was... I honestly thought this was one of the coolest ideas that Konami's ever actually had. Now, the figures are whatever at this point in time. I mean, let's be honest. There, there's something cool that you can sit on your desk. There's something awesome that you can enjoy. And at this point in time, you can only really pick these up on the secondary market. But I will tell you one good thing about this. If you've been on TCG Player and you've been looking up the pre-sales on some of the pot stuff... You can find some of these cards at extremely, extremely cheap values. Um, these cards don't seem like they have crazy value, except for, I mean, the Pot of Prosperity and things like that, but that's to be expected. If it's a more suited metagame card, some of the worser ones, like the Pot of Generosity, I've seen going for $2. All right, so if you're somebody out here, it's like, well, you know, I didn't want to spend the crazy amount of money to pick these up. Well parted out, the product is going to make way more in the long run. So that's why players were looking at this product and going, hmm, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll pick up singles on this. And once again, I, I think the earliest opportunity to look at the value on this set is the early stages. So take advantage as soon as you see this. Go take a look and see how some of these cards are holding up and go, hmm, you know, I, I wonder how things will settle on the market. Obviously, the Forbidden and Limited list is always going to be one of the biggest impacting factors of a product like this, but let's be honest here. Like, you know you kind of want to have a playset of the Pot of Dualities because they're going to look nice. Same thing here with the Pot of Prosperities, but, you know, there's a massive fear that we could see that card eventually disappear off into the sunset somewhere. So, I did pick up three of these. I wish I'd picked up a fourth to leave sealed just to have. Maybe I'll leave all three sealed for collectability reasons, but very, very interesting. And then, of course, I had to pick up the Anniversary Kaiba set. Uh, I still think that this was a very very high priced product uh the average duelist i guarantee you i mean you were getting out of the door a little bit under 500 dollars for this product if you were just trying to collect this and that's an insane price point um it, i mean the three blue eyes were nice i am kind of curious to know how the secondary market's going to handle the value with this but this was by far one of the most expensive collectible pickups of the year and we'll have to wait and see how this holds up I think that a lot of people are, uh, a lot of people miss the opportunity for this, and I think there's going to be a lot of juicing on the secondary market for this. If those blue eyes show up, I don't want to say $200 a piece, but you, you could probably see 100 plus on them, especially just to make sure that players could have them. Yeah, I I don't really know what to expect on this set um, for secondary, but those are and I, I my question today was hey, you know what product have you picked up? What's going on? What future stuff are you looking towards? And I wanted to try to answer that and go through you know some of my mindset with why I'm approaching some of this stuff. There's always going to be collectability reasons, and you know set reasons as well but there's also you know hey you know this seems like a good overall pickup for the future just to have so that's where i'm sitting right now with things so please leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think and i'll see your beautiful faces back here in day guys peace out patrons
Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.